Hey guys, welcome to the Titanium Vault. I'm your host, RJ Bates. Today I'm sitting down with my good friend, David Lecco. How you doing, man? Doing awesome, RJ. Yeah, man, We're here so, in the midst of this coronavirus. I know, and, and you're also uh, coming from live from Phillip Rivers' new homeland, right? Are you, are you guys excited about that in Indianapolis? Actually, I'm not quite sure what you're talking about. <laughs> I, right, I do live in Indianapolis. Well, no, fill me in. I'm sure anyone so, listening so, would like to know. So, Philip Rivers, he's the, he was the quarterback for the L.A. Chargers. He just signed with Indianapolis, the, the Colts, yesterday. Oh, my gosh. I totally miss it. Yes, yes. You have, a, you have a new great quarterback coming your way. So, hopefully you guys can make it back. So, I'm a, I'm a sports geek. And we've got no sports going on right now in the world. So, I'm, I'm, I'm living on, you know, NFL free agency. So, anyway, yeah. it's not, not sports. So, uh, for the people that don't know you, briefly explain what it is that you do in real estate investing so everybody can get an idea of that. Absolutely. So we've got the, the most complete app you can use to build a street team when you're driving for dollars looking for rundown houses. Awesome. I've got eight rental properties and I'm building my own portfolio. That's actually how I started and created the app was for my own purpose, driving for dollars. Cool. So let's, let's go back to the beginning. So how did, how did Deal Machine kind of come about? How did you create it? I mean, I know I've used it personally myself. It's pretty in depth. So how did you come about with that? In 2016, I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I went to a local meetup to figure out how to get one of these good rental properties. And I found out on the MLS there weren't a lot of deals at the time. So I went driving for dollars. Added about 40 properties over two or three weeks. Hadn't followed up with any of them yet because driving around was the fun part. I was too tired or distracted when I got home to do the lookups, send out the mail, which I would have to do by hand or print off. I was actually printing off because I didn't have enough properties yet to use a service. You typically you need like a minimum of 200. Right. And then three weeks passed by. I noticed one of these houses looked like it got bought and was starting to get renovated. And I realized I missed the opportunity because I didn't follow up that day that I found it. And that's what motivated me to figure out how to build an app originally just for me. But the idea was that it could look up the county records because those are online, but they're in a clunky website. I was like, it could be a lot easier if it was an app that would just look that up and then send out mail through our, you know, a service that we could provide the like one off mail could be sent right. that way. It could, everything could happen instantaneously when you're in front of the house and I would get out of my own way and I'd stop delaying the process, stop letting my human nature just kind of ruin any type of follow up that needed to happen. Did you have any tech background or app building background before trying to tackle this? I did actually. I was working as a software developer, nine to five job, not a bad job. I, I actually built this software called Chapter Builder. This company uh, had bought it and I was working for them. And it's a recruitment tool for fraternities and sororities. So, all right. So you had done that in the background. You kind of have this mm -hmm. idea of what you need to do for your own personal real estate business. At what point in time did you say, hey, I've got a pretty good idea here? Maybe this could be something that I could take to the public. That was the beginning of 2017 is when I put it on the app store. There was a couple of friends, Align Perez. He's a guy here who does wholesaling. And also Brittany Wicks. She works for Alpine Property Solutions and buys like 30 properties in Indianapolis every month. She was like, I'll pay a thousand bucks to try any new marketing method. And so I was like setting up my Stripe account. And I took her credit card over the phone and then I preloaded, I got, I got the app on her phone and I basically preloaded it with like a thousand mailers. Right. And then a line was like, Hey, I would love to use it too. And at that point it's a pain to like get it on somebody's phone if they're not a developer and if it's not on the app store. So then I put, I put it on the app store so that um, a line could use it. And uh, that's what motivated me to put it on the app store. So did you ever, because look, as, as entrepreneurs, you know, we, we have ideas of things that we need that can make our businesses better. Did you ever have a fear that, man, I'm going to put this out there and, and people are going to be like, this is the dumbest idea or, 
you know, I, I can't believe he's charging this much or anything along those lines. Did you ever have any fears when you were kind of announcing Deal Machine or was it even called Deal Machine when you were first starting? Well, I never made an announcement. It wasn't really meant to be a business. There was no launch, you know, there's no announcement. But once, you know, once I kind of put it out there, we fortunately live in an industry that loves telling our competition what works well. <laughs> and be because it was working well, the word started to spread. You know, just as much, you live in Phoenix? No, I'm in right? Fort Worth, Texas. You're in t Fort Worth, okay. But you know the Phoenix group, they're a great example of this, mm -hmm. that they get together and mastermind with the people in their own market to oh, share sure. ideas. Yep. And that's just so unique to this industry. And it's a key to what allowed us to grow the way that we did. That's awesome, man. Because, you know, I, we've had ideas, you know, I'll just take next level flipping, for example, it's a, it's our online mastermind. We've had an episode about it and, and, you know, it was one of those ideas that we had, but then I naturally have this fear of what if it's met with a bunch of pushback, you know? Um, what if people are like, Hey, you're just out to get the next buck or something like that. Right. And, and it's funny you bring that up because some of our best salespeople have been the people that have used it and been a part uh -huh. of the community. And that's yeah. essentially what happened with you. So at what, at 2017, you put it on the app store, you let a couple of people in your local market use it. What was the, the catalyst that kind of took you to the next level where I feel like almost everybody in the industry that has ever thought about doing driving for dollars knows about mm -hmm. deal machine. So what took deal machine to that next level? The thing that took Deal Machine to the next level was people with influence recommending it. Definitely gotcha. the key that helped that out. Who was the first out. influencer that kind of put you out there? Well, the the biggest one was was Max. Yeah, you know, Max and I met at a Sean Terry event, and it was had no discussions about Deal Machine, but he had just found it online, and then I had actually messaged him about it. I think later he posted a bl a vlog. Um, like his fourth or fifth log was about the deal machine app and then max took off after that point and so you know we uh there was a lot of other influencers as well but he was a big first one brent daniels was was uh not too long after that and he started telling his members about using deal machine and he always taught driving for dollars was the best list so that was a really natural like product for him to recommend right and uh that was uh i think that was in the beginning of uh end of 2018 is when brent shared that and uh those two have been definitely big influencers in spreading the word and there's been countless others as well yeah and i mean when you look at the landscape of single family real estate wholesaling right now i mean those are two of the biggest influencers out there I think everybody mm -hmm. knows who Max Maxwell is and everybody knows what TTP is, you know? Um, right. So, so you, you got hooked up with the right people early on. Um, there was no even strategy other than right place, right time. And I was knowing that I needed to go out to events to meet people. Right. And that's what, that's how it happened was just deciding to go take some action and try something new and let serendipity happen where it's going to happen. So, all right, for the people that are listening, I go to the app store, download Deal Machine. What am I doing with this? How does Deal Machine help me? Yes, most likely you're gonna tack this on to your business as an additional reliable lead source. Put someone else in charge of it and then hire an additional person to drive and use this thing daily. Okay. Deal Machine, lets you systematize driving for dollars, which is hard to do without technology. It's gonna let you pin a house and that's going to, you're gonna pin houses that look like the worst houses, the ones that are run down. And then you're gonna market to them and you can do that straight from the app. The key though, as a business owner, typically is going to be put someone else in charge of that, hire a driver for $14 an hour, have them actively driving every day, and then your person in charge of it would probably be your lead manager. And so they're going to measure those KPIs that you're, you know, for that, that lead source. Um, so the technology gives you a lot of tools like route tracking, 
you can see if they took a break and got Taco Bell on the clock, <laughs> which is fine as long as they stop the drive, you know, stop the driving, stop the clock. Right. So you've got a lot of accountability um, functionality there that's meant for building out a team. Yeah, and I think that's one of the coolest things is the route tracking because also you can tell your your person who's in charge of driving for dollars, hey, I want you to farm this neighborhood, right? Mm -hmm. And you're actually going to be able to see because for anybody that's done driving for dollars before, you can kind of weave your way through a neighborhood and miss like five or six streets in the neighborhood because you're just, you know, okay, I hit a dead end, I turn right, and then, oh, I missed this cul-de-sac. And that could be where your deal is, right? And, and you're not mm -hmm. able to track that if you're not using a tool like Deal Machine. Mm -hmm. So once you pin the, the property, at that point in time, what should you do with that information? Are you marketing directly through Deal Machine? Are you then skip tracing it through another service? What is the best way that you recommend your clients to, to market to the customers? Yep. Press the button to start the mail right away. There's a skip trace button as well to go ahead and look up the phone number immediately and call them. You can also export your leads from Deal Machine to put them through Titanium Skip or another program that you're using for bulk stuff. But the app will let you actually do individual properties one off within it right away. Gotcha. And, and then look, at the end of the day, I think this is very important to talk about because I talk about this all the time. You and I were just at Ground Zero in San Antonio, mm -hmm. right? Great event. But it's full of people that have systems that they're constantly trying to improve, right? And I mm -hmm. feel like as business owner, even for myself, right? So we offer skip tracing. You offer skip tracing. Every other person offers skip tracing nowadays, right? And, and it's hard to know what is the best system to use in your business? I think nowadays what you need to do is find a system that satisfies your needs, satisfies your marketing strategies, and then just stick with it. Stick with the one system because there's always going to be that shiny object in the background that's going to be like, look, we released a new feature. And, and one of our biggest things that really hurt us in 2019 was we would use the system for a couple months and then cancel and go on to the next shiny object syndrome and then use that mm -hmm. for a couple months and then switch. I think for the people Man. that I've seen, and I, I want to get your feedback on that, but from what I've seen, people that utilize Deal Machine, because I'm a part of Max's community, just like another 100,000 other people are, there are people that are adamant about how great Deal Machine is but part of the reason why it's so great is, is because they've been using it for 12, 18 months and now they've mastered that system. Whereas mm -hmm. if they were switching every other month to a new system, it takes a while to learn how to use that system. So I'd love to get your feedback about that topic because I know you're in it as a vendor and I'm sure you feel that. Right. I couldn't agree more. One of the things we actually teach before somebody implements Steel Machine is how to properly implement a new lead source. And it starts with choosing one new thing to implement, not three, one, you know, allocating the, the right budget and understanding how much budget you should allocate to test it out. Otherwise you'll end up being, uh, you'll have to stop too soon before you fully test it and implement it. Mm -hmm. The next step is actually getting dirty and realizing that you're, you're going to go through a stage of figuring things out and it's going to be chaotic which is true when you're learning how to do anything because you've got to figure stuff out. You don't, that's the pain of switching. And then obviously you want it to become ROI positive, develop your KPIs after you've done several deals through it and put someone else in charge of it. And I think that goes along with exactly what you're saying about switching mm -hmm. causes chaos. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you only utilize a system for a couple of months, like you said, you don't have enough data there to really go back and track to see if it's working or not, because you're, you're still an infant when it comes to this, this marketing tool or strategy or whatever it is, however you want to define that. Um, so I think that's very important as far as, you know, for, for people that are driving for dollars, I, I, I think that's like a, a newer, it's a strategy for a newer investor, right? 
or mm-hmm. someone that well, is high volume and they have enough capital that they can hire people to go out and do driving for dollars for them for their company right so i think that's mm-hmm. the, the the two levels of investors that do driving for dollars and i could be wrong you mm-hmm. really know a lot more that's just me guessing it's uh, a good way to segment it for yeah. sure so when you look at that situation and you tell someone that has a very low budget and they're new to this that they need to spend money on deal machine explain to them why this investment in the deal machine benefits their company the way that i my origin story explained you know i wasn't following up i wasn't able to get my follow-ups out there because of limitations on you know minimum 200 mailers at a time the timing and the follow-up is so important and most humans aren't going to get it right and that's why it's worth paying fifty dollars to make sure all that's handled for you yep and you can I, you can totally you can totally do it without the technology. That's not the point. You know, the point is that it's going to provide you over fifty dollars worth of value by managing the entire list, printing out every piece of mail, remembering when to resend out the mail, and then also the time to look up the owner and just have that all done with a click of a button. Yep, I uh, I did an interview with Don Costa, who is a rehabber in Fresno, California. He does high volume. Um, I interviewed him on Propelio TV, um, Titanium mm-hmm. Tuesdays, back when we were doing that segment. And um, Don was talking about his marketing and where his deals came from. And he was he's a super high-volume direct mail guy. But when he broke down, I think he did 297 deals um, okay. in 2018. Okay? I don't know how many he did in 2019 because I haven't interviewed him since then. but. 297 deals. He talked about, I think it was 40% of his deals came from directly from follow up of like five to seven times. And Mm. without the systems and the processes that he had in place, he would have missed out on those deals. You're talking about that's over 120, 130 deals that he would have Mm -hmm. missed out on if he wouldn't have had those systems and processes in place. Like you're talking about with follow up. And I agree with what you're talking about that for investors that are getting started, that's where they miss out on so many deals. They go out and they do the legwork to find the deal itself by driving for dollars. And then it gets written down or it gets put in a spreadsheet and then it's touched maybe one or two times and then it's forgotten about. That's why I want to focus on that. You you gave the the direct answer that I wanted you, you to give. So uh, I'm glad we're on the same page there. Now, for people that totally. are a little bit more advanced and maybe they're not driving for dollars, what are some of the benefits of actually bringing someone on board, like you're talking about paying $14, $15 an hour and get them out driving for dollars? What are some of the benefits for people like that? Mm-hmm. The main thing to realize is where their lead lists are coming from in the first place. It is very easy to buy a list of leads online. Therefore, you could expect a lot of other investors to be buying very similar lists to what you're buying. The way that translates to you is you're spending more on marketing and you're competing with investors on price who are talking to those same property owners. Yep. Driving for dollars is the mainly the only list you just can't buy online. And that is an advantage to you to either use exclusively or to stack on top of your other lists of motivation reasons, whether that be high equity, you know, absentee owner, et cetera. And because it takes uh, a bit of legwork or a bit of organization to build that list yourself, not a lot of investors do it. So by uh, having that list of distressed homes, your ROI goes up, the marketing spend goes down per deal. Like simple wholesaling, for example, they did 20 deals and they were 21% more profitable. TJ Ruzo in Seattle was like, I, I track the analytics on all my lead sources. Deal machine this year is the most profitable. And so it's uh, it's going to help you. It, as you scale, it becomes difficult when you get higher overhead costs. Um, but deal machine can help you continue to scale with a limited overhead so you can keep more of that cash yourself. And, and you're talking about a market in Seattle that's super hot, highly competitive, um, higher price points. So having mm-hmm. a higher profit percentage is, is – uh, 
so vital. I mean, you can't mm -hmm. state how important that is for his business alone. Um, another thing that I want to talk about when it comes to driving for dollars is, and you talk about buying lists, um, the, the motivation that I think most times investors kind of forget about is not a financial burden, but maybe just a physical distress of a property that's not going to show up on a list. The only list that could possibly no. show up on, unless there's a financial burden is maybe an equity percent list which is going to show up. I mean, you're going to get all kinds of properties, but for the people that just maybe can't manage the house anymore, like it's just too much for them. It's not going to show up on a list. And that's what you can visibly see physically see when you're driving for dollars is that property is distressed. That seller needs to sell right now. I can see it in their yard and mm -hmm. their roof, the paint job, whatever it is. Those are things that you can physically see. And yeah, that's where it leads to, you know, either door knocking, cold calling, text message, whatever it is, or even sending out a postcard. That's where you get those phone calls. And it's like, yes, I want to sell. How did you know I wanted to sell? I saw it. I was driving by, you know, and it just mm -hmm. it opens up. And it, the, the other thing is uh, for anybody that does volume in texting or cold calling or direct mail, um, one of the most annoying questions to get is, is that you bought the list, right? You've never seen the house. And then they say, well, how did you know I want to sell my house? Or what do you want to offer me? And then you say, well, I've never actually seen the house. You know, it, it, and then it just starts this, it can be an awkward, and that's where sales skills comes in. That's where like people like John Martinez and their training help you. But when you're driving for dollars, that knowledge of, yeah, we were driving by and I, I saw it and you look, I'm trying to buy a house in your neighborhood. And it just, it flows a lot better. So it, it helps right. so many different ways. Um, outside of Deal Machine, I know you, you also invest. You said you're trying to build your, your rental portfolio. Mm -hmm. How do you manage being both an investor and also the man behind Deal Machine? I didn't do any houses last year at all. Oh, Deal wow. Machine grew like six times what it was the year before. And so I focused all my efforts on Deal Machine. And this year I've done three houses so far. And so I'm getting back into that. Um, but that's how I handled it is I just stopped and focused on one thing. You know what? And, and what I, you can go ahead. Go ahead. I really do. Um, I do the, the acquisitions, the marketing, anything personally for me, either when I'm testing a new version of deal machine or after hours, I try to stick to nine to five to be the, the deal machine time because it's so easy to get distracted and be busy, but not get a lot of things done. And so I really try to focus, focus, focus on one thing. So I always try to uh, beat certain like uh, topics or hints that guests give my listeners over and over and over again. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had Preddy Tawary on. Uh, he owns a hundred million dollars worth of real estate holdings in Boston, Massachusetts. And wow. the theme behind his, and he's only 28 years old. Um, the mm -hmm. theme behind his interview was how laser focused he was on the niche that he chose. He chose yeah. uh, multifamily surrounding the multiple universities within downtown Boston for student housing. That's what he wanted to go after. He ended up becoming the guy that, hey, if you had a condo, townhome, small multifamily, that's your buyer. Go to Preddy. He's the guy that's going to buy it, right? I think it's it's important for people to realize that's what you did with Deal Machine, where you started off as an investor and you created Deal Machine, but then you saw the opportunity within Deal Machine, right? And like you said, right place, right time. You had a couple of people like Brent Daniels, Max Maxwell attached to it, promote it for mm -hmm. you. But then you saw that opportunity, you became laser focused. And, and I yeah. bring this up all the time because it's so easy to start off as a wholesaler and then want to become a flipper and then become a landlord and then want to do owner finance and learn how to do subject to and do Airbnbs. And then I want to do commercial and you're really not good at anything. And I speak from experience. These are things that I've done. So I always <laughs> bring this up anytime I possibly can to our listeners like, Hey, pay attention to people like David that became laser focused on the best niche that they possibly could in the business. And you know, now Deal Machine is, is very well known, so well known that 
you became a part of my good buddy Dutch Jackson's song D for D. Um, yes. And uh, you're a part of the song. He came up to Indianapolis, uh, filmed the video with you guys. So talk about that for a second. What was that like when you heard Dutch's song where he's talking about Deal Machine within it? Man, I was so excited. It's the first time I've ever invited an internet friend to stay at my house. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I, I realized how weird that was after I did it, but it felt like uh, it felt like the right thing to do because he published the album. You know, the, one of the songs on there is about Deal Machine, so I was yeah. super excited about that. Wanted to have him come do uh, an actual music video to go along with it, and he actually reached out to me about it, and I had no hesitation absolutely need to do this yeah so he just stayed at my house in the guest room and then we filmed a video the next day and that was the first day that we actually met in person as well that's awesome man. so he's he's such an incredible person we're actually both from st louis yep he yeah and so he had a, a whole career prior to real estate rap so that was really fun to go into some of the details of that with him because much of it was in st louis where i grew up so that was fun. We had a yeah. good connection there too. So obviously Dutch is a part of the Titanium family now. And, and uh, he, he's one of my best friends, man. I, I love the guy to death. And I just, I love his creativity. Um, I'm not musically inclined, but I love music probably more, more than most things in my life. Um, I, I, it's just one of those things that makes me happy. Um, I always mm -hmm. wished I could create music. So now I'm like always giving Dutch ideas for songs and I'm like, dude, we got to do a song like this or, you know, about this topic or this subject. And, uh, so we're, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to him coming out with his next album. Uh, it's going to be called the MD or earnest money deposit. Uh, but yeah, D for D is one of my favorite songs. We're actually going to play D for D at the end of this, uh, interview. So everybody can hear it if you haven't. And, uh, you know, definitely check out, you know, the album D for D on iTunes and Spotify. Uh, shout out to Dutch there. Cause, cause we, you know, David and I both love him. Um, oh, so, I love him. Yeah. Outside That's of that, awesome. man, uh, what, what's the plans for deal machine moving forward? How, you know, are you going to stay laser focused on what you're providing now and just try to get better? Or do you have plans to expand to other things or what, what's the plan with deal machine? We want to keep going deep on the driving and we just actually released, we were working on a virtual driving for dollars tool. Okay. We released it early because people are all at home in quarantine during the coronavirus. What's been really awesome to see is that even though it's not near done, it's just a very basic version is that hundred people downloaded it the first day and started using it. And we're helping people figure out how to impl implement that in their business and utilize their time at home wisely. Yep. So that's been actually really rewarding to see. And we've got, you know, plans to build that and uh, improve that as well. So speaking of the coronavirus, I, I think it would be a miss of me to, to not bring that up with where we are today as a society, country. Um, you know, what effects is deal machine feeling or, or what are you hearing between your customers? Um, you know, I, I think everybody's a little bit nervous and these are uncharted territories. This is what I keep saying. Totally. Right? Unprecedented. None of us know what, what the fallout of this is going to be or if there is going to be any. Um, I think it's yeah. all just a guessing game right now, but what are you hearing and kind of what are your thoughts about what's happening right now? Yeah. So I kind of said this at the beginning where people will react completely differently to the same situation and not all reactions are helpful. And I want people to hear that they are in control of their emotions and how they react. And, oh, you know, I, I think that an abundance of caution is a good idea in terms of social distancing. We're shutting everything down, save some cash. If you're going to purchase something, you know, minimize discretionary spending, all great ideas, maybe even a hiring freeze. But what I think is um, all great leaders do is they take the situation that they're given and they use that to the fullest. And they think about how they can use that to the fullest rather than focusing on, well, what happens if nobody buys my houses or what happens if nobody wants to sell their house? And I think that talking with experts, like I just talked with uh, Jamil, who does like yeah. 900 deals from Keegley 
And he said, thus far, nobody's even stopped buying. They're, they've sold every single house this week as usual. So just, uh, I, I struggle and, and my mind goes to these negative places just like everyone else's. And I'm really focusing on how can I be constructive in this time? And that's helped a lot. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, just from my perspective and, and, uh, I by no means think I'm an expert when it comes to these types of situations, but I am naturally a very aggressive person. Like, uh, there's, there's very few times that I would consider myself to have an ounce of fear when it comes to business. Um, today I am making sure that I make the conscious decision to reel in my aggression to mm -hmm. pay attention to what's going on. This is not the market we were in six months ago or a year ago. That doesn't necessarily mm -hmm. mean it's a bad thing. Like Jamil said, yeah. buyers are still buying. Same thing for us. Cassie listed two houses this week and they got full price offers in the day they went on the market. So That's we're not awesome. seeing an, an, a, a negative outcome of this. But what I am saying is, is just stop for a second. Think mm -hmm. about what you're gonna do. Like you said, just maybe just slow down for a second and just pay attention. And think about everything that you're doing, including your reaction to everything that's going on. It's very important for us as business leaders to think about our teams and our families and everything that's right. going on and make sure we're making the best decisions across the board. Um, so that being said, I don't want to go off on a tangent about the coronavirus. Um, I just think it's, you know, the time that we're, you know, we're, we're doing this interview. That's what everybody's thinking about. And so it's right. I, what we're all talking about. My interpretation of that is um, don't sit around and do nothing. Right. But don't go out and buy the boat you've been looking at, you know, and don't go, go buy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Maybe don't make that hiring decision if it's not crucial right now. But also, I wouldn't stop marketing. I wouldn't Absolutely. stop no. looking for deals and being aggressive on those fronts. Well, there's going to be a lot of people that are going to need us right now as investors. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of people mm -hmm. that are going to need help in their situations. And that's something we always talk about, right? We're here to help people. But mm -hmm. now there's actually, this is when people are going to need our help more than anything. And uh, mm -hmm. it, it's going to be imperative for us to step up and do things the right way. Um, mm -hmm. And, and truly think about helping people. So um, with that being said, man, um, I, I want to wrap up with uh, some final thoughts from you um, about Deal Machine and, and just kind of uh, what, are, what are some things that people could take away from this interview that as the owner of Deal Machine, the, the man behind the, the dot process, what are the best things that people could take away on, on how they could implement this in their business and, and you know, capitalize on the opportunity. Absolutely. When you choose to implement it, make sure you choose to implement one thing. Make sure you understand the budget that's required. If you're looking to get your first deal budget for six hundred to a thousand dollars, know the numbers, the KPIs that you'll need to probably get a deal, and that's two hundred houses mailed or contacted three times each over three months. All this planning is going to lead to success because you've got enough money to keep doing it long enough to have success. Um, those are the big, that's, that's what I said earlier. And that's still the biggest takeaway that I feel like people need to hear is plan and focus. Awesome, man. Well, thank you so much for taking time. I know you're super busy. Um, it was great to finally meet you in San Antonio at ground zero. And you too. Uh, I'm, I'm super excited to see where deal machine goes from here. And, and, how you continue to be an industry leader for, for the people that do driving for dollars. Um, guys, that's our episode for this week. Remember like every week, if you're listening on iTunes, we only like five star ratings. Um, if you want to give us a four or below star rating, go give it to someone else and then come back and give us a five star rating. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe and notifications. And we're going to end this week with D for D by Dutch Jackson. We'll see you guys next week. Yeah, what's up, man? It's the one and only the world's greatest DJ. They call me the K.I.D., the King Capri. Now let me say it right. The King Capri.
I want to give big shots to my man Homer St. Louis down thoroughly, my man Death Jackson, banging all over the city, all over the state. He's about to get real crazy for y'all, for y'all, for y'all. That's where I'ma be. I'm a deal machine. Snapshot what I see. When I get that bag, we gon' EAT. It's REI until I D I E. Hey, 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 it's D for D. Hey, 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 it's D for D. Hey, 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 it's D for D. Hey, D for D. Snapshot what I see. Get that bag, we gon' EAT. It's REI until I D.I.E. Y'all can talk, we gon' hit the streets for the cheese, cause that's all I see. It's just like playing with lottery, but see, we playing with property. You got a motor like pottery, it's like a real life monopoly. Let's JV and build some camaraderie. Keep it real with me, homie, don't lie to me. Got no time for the games, if you ain't about making no paper, then homie, don't bother me. AOV 250, sell us, he only wants 60. The repair's about 35. Well, that mean we about to be filthy. Making money make me wanna drive. I'm all through your city so quickly. And you could believe it or not, but the money you making, it should be on real, please. And it is not a get rich scheme. Play it small, you could do big things. Surround yourself with others like you. And start fulfilling on your big dreams. D4D got me feeling like Michael, a champion on the six ring. I show you all how to get cream. Hit the boulevard with your deal machine. D4D, that's where I'm a be. Deal machine. Snapshot what I see. Get that bag. We gon' EAT. It's REI until I D I D. Sweating the tears, and I ain't so happy I'm here. Got no time for the game if you with it, then let go. Show you the way, follow me like an echo. I chase my dreams in the green like a gecko. Shout out my guy from the Lou David Leco. We making moves, trying to build like some Lego. Now holding back, put everything on the table. They thought I was playing, they thought I was joking. Now investors, they asking the sign of my label. <laughs> That's where I'm a be. Deal with shoes. Snapshot what I see. Get that bag. We gon' EAT.